Lacrosse community. My name is Ryan Burns. I'm the president of the Lacrosse Leadership Institute. It's our mission to empower all those that love lacrosse to utilize the skills you gain from the sport to ultimately live the life of your dreams. Today, we're so fortunate to be joined by Kara Hogan, and she's doing just that. She's been run, running Edge Lacrosse Training for the last five years, and she's going to share a little bit of her story with us and make sure we have a huge impact in our community. Kara, thank you so much for joining us today. For our group that doesn't quite know what you're about, can you share how you got involved in lacrosse and where you are today? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I love your energy and I love what you're doing. I think, you know, bringing together this already close-knit lacrosse community and, and you know, sharing it with, with younger players and, and the whole community, I just think is a great, great thing. So first of all, thank you for having me. <laughs> Fortunate to be here. But, um, you know, for me, getting started with lacrosse, um, traditionally late. I started playing in seventh grade. Um, my mom played actually at Loyola University for a couple of years. So lacrosse was, you know, around in our family, but um, being the youngest and being a competitive swimmer and playing other sports, it just didn't happen when I was super young, um, which to be honest, I'm kind of glad because, you know, I feel like when you're really young, you're all just kind of running at the ball. And I'm like, you know what, let's just skip over that whole section. <laughs> and just start um, in the prime. So, you know, one of my, actually one of my, um, you know, competitive soccer teammates' fathers said to my mom, you need to get her to try out for lacrosse. So I did, I played for the local rec team, which anyone in Maryland listening is LTRC. And, um, and then tried out for the middle school, which is originally middle school, which I coach now. So full circle moment. Yeah, and then, um, you know, like, I, I feel like every other lacrosse story just fell in love with it you know, the first game, like opportunity. I just, you know, wow, I love this. It felt very natural to me. Um, it was so fun to play and it just felt like it fit. And then from there, just played all through high school, all through college. And now we're here. <laughs> okay, it's awesome that you can just take your athleticism and be able to bring it to a sport that, that we all fell in love with. And I think it does make sense to kind of skip the little bobblehead phase <laughs> of lacrosse. But if you look back over your lacrosse career playing, coaching, do you have a pinnacle moment or maybe a couple moments that really stand out to you? Well, I mean, honestly, for, for as a player, I think, you know, when you find that niche, I guess, and, and you find, you know, whether whatever kind of community or environment it is, for me, it was um, hiring a trainer. I, I didn't actually have like a private or group lacrosse instructor um, until that, you know, incoming to senior year of college, which is actually kind of crazy to think about and even say out loud, because I do think, you know, I look and I, I look at the ages of the girls that I'm training, and they're obviously a lot younger, somewhere in college, but th that start is again sooner, which is great for them. I'm glad that I can provide that. Um, so for me, I think, you know, training hard and and not only, you know, I was already committed to it, but just realizing, you know, if you train with a game like drill, you're gonna have that much more confidence, that much more readiness when you're on the field. And, and it, it showed, you know, when I came back senior year that fall, um, I got, honored to be a captain and I was just playing my best game and I think that you know that was my you know really high point um in terms of performance and then just kind of went from there um as a you know as a coach I would have to say it's now honestly um, I mean I would hope that you know there's only up from here but um you know we just celebrated and when I say we I just celebrated five-year anniversary mark yes it was very very exciting everyone was so cute I got a lot of messages so thank you girls for everyone that sent everything but that was a very exciting you know milestone to to celebrate and um a very real feeling you know like not only am I a small business owner but this is really you know proving to to go well and not only have a positive impact on the players but but be strong so that, right now it's feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's neat that you can recognize the pinnacle of your lacrosse performance being 
honored as a captain. I think that's a, a big accomplishment and that that's part of what we're about in terms of leadership. But that right. correlates to where you are now. That game like the game like speed, the effort, yeah. the the accountability, all of those things we get from the sport impact how we are. Now you can give back and make even deeper veins in the lacrosse community that you're a part of now. When, when we talk about leadership, what comes up for you or what does leadership mean to you? So leadership, actually, when I, when I think about this question, it feels very loaded to me, right? I feel like there's, um, you know, one point of view, which is the leader. Um, what, is, what does it mean to the leader? And then it also, or the leaders, you know, there's not just one. <laughs> and then what does it also mean to those like looking to the leader, like looking to be led? Um, so there's kind of several levels, which I think is interesting. Um, but at the end of the day, I realized leadership is showing others that they can, proving to others that they can. And, and you know, whatever is at the end of that sentence, it could be so different. It could be different from you to me. It could be different from one player to the next. Um, lacrosse, swimming, soccer, basketball, you know, athletics, um, work, <laughs> right, academics. But proving to someone, you know what, you can, and I'm not only going to show you how or show you that you have the strength within you to do it, but I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be that level head that you can look to, that you can, you know, that I can guide you through whatever it is that you're, that you're doing. Um, you know, I think it's, it's cool that I found myself in a leadership role pretty young. Um, I, I think also for anyone listening who's injured right now, unfortunately, that's a, that's a harsh reality of our sport. Um, I tore my ACL second day freshman year. So I found even as an injured freshman, right, who didn't even really get the opportunity to prove myself as a, as a team member, I was still leading like all American seniors just from, I, I mean, I didn't even know it, but they were like, you're like my coach. <laughs> You're helping me through this this competitive game, even though you're not on the field, even though you're not next to me, even though you're not my age. So I think, you know, again, when I think about what a leader means, I get I feel really empowered. I feel really excited um, because I know that I'm a leader with Edge Across Training, obviously, with the girls that I coach. But I also love reflecting back my time as a as an athlete. And I loved leading my team. It's just such an amazing feeling to lead and be led and and you know I think for all the athletes listening I think that calming presence um the ability to keep a level head and be calm cool collected even during the most hectic plays hectic roughing hectic you know it's tied eight eight ten seconds left you know ultimately players we, we look to who's calm and if you can have that impact on everyone else and kind of make everyone else feel okay confident then you're a leader. If you can lead by example by hustling and getting the ball back, you're a leader. If you can, if you can hype everybody up on the sideline in the huddle, you're a leader. Get everyone through the time 300s, you know? So there's a several different ways to lead, but my goal was always, you know, be the ultimate leader, be the vocal leader, be the lead by example, and also have that calming presence that makes everyone feel good. You're giving me a little PTSD thinking about the time 300. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, I shouldn't <laughs> say that word. I know that that affects everyone. <laughs> but, but, but honestly, we all secretly love it a little bit. There's a little bit. We're all a little psychotic in, in that fact. But but I think you said it before, it's training at that high level, you gain the confidence in yourself, and that's when you have 10 seconds left, tie ball game. You're cool and collected because you know you've trained so much harder. You've done that time 300 and you've completed it. it wasn't the worst thing in the world though yes. at the time you you hate it <laughs> right. uh, but but one of the things you said Kara, that really has stuck out to me that i'd like for you to elaborate on is the fact that you were leading as an injured player and this shows that you don't need a title to be a leader it's more about attitude and what you're doing so can you talk a little bit more about that either your experience or, or how you coach people to be leaders regardless of if they're a captain or not. Right. Absolutely. I think, um, like, like what you said, it's at the end of the day, it's more so an attitude and kind of, um, a demeanor and the way that you carry yourself. So a freshman can absolutely be a leader. Um, or it, you don't have to be a senior captain. You don't have to be the senior all American, all big 10 
player to be the leader, to be the player that everyone looks to. I think um, experience definitely helps, but you know, when you like titles aside, I think as an athlete, as a human being, if you are confident, if you look at others and you're able to see the best in them and you're able to bring it out in them, um, you're ultimately going to end up whether you like it or not, or whether you want it or not, you're going to end up in that leadership role where others are going to look to you. And, you know, I, I wanted that. <laughs> I don't even know if I knew, like looking back, I'm like, I don't know if I was gung ho, like, yeah, I'm going to be the leader as a freshman, but I, I like that feeling. I like feeling like others can depend on me and even just my personality um, off the field, you know, friends will call me for advice. Players will call me for advice. And I think, like we were saying before, you don't need a title to do that. Um, if you if you thrive on that kind of pressure and accountability and responsibility, then I think just being yourself and showing others, hey, you can do this, I can do this too, let's do it together. Again, you're gonna you're gonna be in that leadership role. I think that's great. Do you think you're born a leader, or is that a skill that you're able to develop? Uh, that's that's tough. I think I think. There's both for sure. I think um, being like, I think sometimes personality traits, um, you know, can lead to, to being a leader for sure. Like, um, um, you know, just a little bit of that kind of collected head. I think, you know, that ability to perform under pressure is some people just have it. But again, you can definitely 100% train and work on that skill to become more of one. I mean, when I look and reflect back on my leadership roles, the different ones I was in, they weren't just, oh, like Kara's, Kara's leading her team. You know, it is learned. And I think most of it is, actually, I'd argue that. Um, just like everything else is a skill, we need to practice. We need to continue to show up. And um, really, anyone can lead if they, if they have the tools and they apply themselves. They can definitely end up in that role again. And that's one of the things that I like to just really empathize with anyone that I'm coaching is the fact that, hey, it's hard to connect with people. We can, all, we can be down, but how do you lift others up and how do you connect with them? And coaching, I coach seventh and eighth graders. So that's right at the part of when they're starting to understand their own confidence, who they want to be, how to lead as well. Usually it's just whoever's the best players there. But I'd love to hear from you thinking the, the psychological side of things, how you go about training and what you do with ed, the edge lacrosse training. Right. So um, I am not a professional, but I did, I did uh, focus on sports psychology, you know, during my time as a senior when we had to, um, you know, write a thesis and really hone in on a specific field. I chose that one. Um, I've worked with a sports psychologist before. When I was a sophomore in high school, I um, actually suffered from a pretty severe concussion playing lacrosse and was out for over nine months. Um, no exercise, no lacrosse, obviously. And um, so when I you know, returned to play, I struggled a little bit with the confidence, um, particularly in a situation where there was a lot of traffic. Um, you know, a lot of defenders and as an attacker, that was a big problem. <laughs> you have to be able to see defender C6 and have no problem with that. So I did um, see a sports psychologist and that, that kind of like fueled that passion and fire when I saw how effective that was and I realized how important that relationship was. I mean, as a sophomore in high school, I'm like, oh, I want to be a sports psychologist. That's definitely something I'm going to do. And then in college, it's, oh, I want to coach lacrosse. And then it's, how can we like, you know, bring these together when I also recognize the importance of hiring a trainer and working with someone on those specific skill sets, it just kind of, I took everything and put it together. Um, and that additional piece of, oh, like it's a, it's a young, cool kind of, I mean, let's be real, a little bit here and there coach that these girls can relate to. I try to be cool with them, no I'm kidding. But um, that, that was like, all the pieces came together and, um, you know, from, from a psychological standpoint, something common that I'll do with my players is um, we focus a lot on details and I, I work to create new drills and make them as game-like as possible. We'll break down a drill and talk about 
um, this defender's here, this defender's there. Some of the situations get very specific, um, but I find that that really helps because you you step on the field, you find yourself in that situation. It's a split second. It's not even conscious. It's like muscle memory. And it brings that like been there, done that attitude, confidence mentality that we don't have unless we practice, unless we train. So we need to train our mindset just as much as our physical, maybe even more. Um, and, you know, again, like we focus on that last shot. This is actually, I'm like getting hyped up. <laughs> My favorite part of training if I had to pick would be the last shot. I take, you know, a small group, I have them close their eyes and we work on visualization. And I say, you have one shot left, right? This is the drill. You've done it just now, 10, 15 times really well. And, and I, and I coach them through it. Put yourself in a pressure situation, close your eyes. I mean, picture all the details, the weather, your uniform, what field you're on. It's tie game. Maybe you're down by one. Um, but you have the ball and you have, you know, 10, 5, 15 seconds left and your team is looking to you to execute. So it's a really cool way to kind of introduce that psychological meets physical concept, which I do think is talked about more and more now, which is great. And it's, it's amazing because usually like 9.5 times out of 10, they do execute and it's awesome. They all hit the target. The, the dodging is like textbook and we're all hyped up after it's like yeah you just score the game winning goal <laughs> and it feels so good and then and then I tell them you know what next opportunity you have that's like that you are going to feel more confident you're going to be more likely to succeed because of this that you just said because of this training because of that mindset performance work um you're gonna you're gonna make it so it's pretty cool it's, it's very cool for me to see seventh, eighth, ninth graders respond that well to that and, and smash it. So that's what it's all about. The intentionality <laughs> behind everything that you do, the, making them realize that, hey, this is the scenario that we're trying to, to create for you. Again, allows them to be cool and collected. I, I've, I've been there before. This isn't, right. this isn't new. And, and that's when we say the clutch players are the mm -hmm. ones that end up being on the field because they, they know what to do, but it all comes in practice. And Absolutely. It sounds like you've been doing a good job of, of coaching those things. Are there any other visualization trainings that you do or anything else? Because that, that was awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I think, you know, most of it is when, when it comes to visualization and helping my athletes with not only introducing that concept, but working on it. Um, I think one of the pillars is, is, you know, positive visualization, you know, the ability to close your eyes and really run a couple plays in your mind, maybe the same one a couple times. I actually recommend different points of view and, you know, visualize yourself playing, playing your best, visualize yourself playing your best lacrosse. And, and the thing is, I, I love what you said intention. I, I use that word a lot. Like we're very intentional with our training. I'm very intentional with my coaching. Um, and, and the same goes for the visualization exercises. You know, you hear visualize your best game. It's like, okay, I scored, but really think about the detail. Like, how did you score? Make your defender overcommit, inside roll, protect your sick, throw the fake, shoot. It's like, you have to think about all of those details. I'm so hyped. <laughs> I'm ready for the game. Put me in. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, we, we, we focus on all the details. There's a lot of intention and, you know, adding that aspect into an elite training session where we're already doing footwork, shooting, mechanics, right? It's not all game. Like, sometimes we've got to work on the fundamentals, throwing that in, it's incredible. We get to do it all. <laughs> now, Kara, to bring this intentionality and visualization that you're teaching for your, your players, I, I wanna do a pivot and ask you about personally, business-wise, what are you visualizing? Where, where do you see yourself going or what are some of your goals? Well, um, in terms of goals, I think, you know, there's a couple couple different ways I could go. There's a couple different ways we could go, but I, I like, I'm already achieving one of my main goals, which was, you know, make it more of a small group training setting um, where, you know, players can really play off of each other and push each other. And it's, it's very cool to see because, you know, when I first started the company, it was mostly, if not all private training. Um, I mean, that's how you build, you know, you know, just all of a sudden, oh, I have 10 spots open <laughs> when you have no clients. So 
just just building that relationship with private lessons, which I do think are great and they're near and dear to my heart. But I think there's something very awesome at the end of the day. It's a team sport um, for a player to watch someone else, maybe their friend, maybe maybe their com competition, watch them do it well, and that like fire, that edge of I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it better or I'm gonna do it different and and build my edge, you know, find my edge within me and bring it to the field in a different way or a better way. And I think that it's, it, we've really, you know, created this competitive, but still very positive training environment where, I mean, the girls are doing such an amazing job. I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's cool that you've been able to create this and foster and actually make your visualization a reality. As we wrap up this conversation, are, are there any last things on your mind that you'd like to share with our community in terms of leadership, lacrosse, training, getting to that next level? But we'd love to give you a, a moment. Well, I do think, you know, and, and this isn't a shameless plug. It's not about me. It's all trainers. Um, I think finding a, a trainer that you want to work with or training on your own or both are, are critical for, you know, youth that are looking to improve, to reach their potential and, you know, reach their goals of, I want to play the next level. I want to play at the big stage. Um, it really does start with those skills being fine tuned. And, you know, from a mechanic standpoint, you're learning how to shoot properly and with power and accuracy. I mean, that's incredible from, you know, from a mental standpoint, you're, you're working your body and your brain in different ways and different scenarios. But again, I just felt once I started working on drills, specific drills on my own and with a trainer, again, doesn't have to be, I know not everyone has access to that. It could be on your own. Your game is going to go way up and your IQ and your skill sets just improve dramatically. So if you can find a way to make it happen and, you know, be grateful that there's Instagram and social now that there's tons of resources out there. I mean, even 10 years ago, it'd be like, one or two YouTube videos, how to take a draw. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> now you have players like Kayla Trainer, like sharing details and Michelle Tumlo, and you have all these amazing athletes, you know, showing, hey, here's a drill. Um, I mean, I share a lot of drills if anyone wants to check them out. <laughs> but again, just committing to the game, immersing yourself in it, watch as many games as you can, train when you can, and that means different things. I want to reiterate one more thing. Doesn't mean go and train every day until the sun is down. That training, your whole program, that also includes rest days and recovery. So it's not get out there and grind forever, which I learned as an entrepreneur. I did that for four years, and it's like, whoa, you do need an off day. Sometimes you need two. So just reiterating to the athletes, it doesn't mean that's all you can do. Do it and recover and do it again and do it again and recover and rest. And then you are going to become an incredible athlete with hopefully leadership qualities, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Kara, thank you so much for your time today. That sustainability of leadership and teamwork that moves forward has made a huge impact in all of our lives. And we can't thank you enough for sharing your perspective on lacrosse and leadership with us. Thanks, guys.